Her time was 71 days, 14 hours, 33 minutes and 18 seconds. To break around the world record, you have to be fast. And to be fast, your boat needs to be light. You take with you the minimum of resources and you manage them down to the last drop of diesel and the last packet of food. And no matter how tired you are, you do that because you're so aware they're finite. And when I stepped off that boat at the finish, I began to question, is our world any different? I want to take you on a journey, one which led me to give up competitive sailing to focus on a much greater challenge. Life on Earth has existed for over four billion years, in which time it has continually adapted and evolved to perfect itself, always within a basic framework. Materials endlessly cycled, energy was provided by the sun, and all life was made to be made again. Mankind appeared only 200,000 years ago, became civilized 20,000 years ago. Only a few hundred years ago, we began to use fossil fuels, a blip in time, the industrial age. We started to mine stuff out of the ground, and we found oil. Each barrel provided the same energy as one man working every day for a decade. Today, you can buy that barrel for the same price as a pair of jeans. So is it a surprise, then, that we used this to move, build homes, schools, cities, make stuff and communicate, live better lives? This new energy allowed us to pump more water, produce more food, enabling our population to increase. It quite literally changed the world. Fishing villages were transformed into megacities in just 50 years. But how long can this carry on? As a child, I never questioned it. No one ever hinted to me at school that this might change. I wanted to find out more about the reality of our situation. And four years ago, I started reading, learning and listening. What I found out staggered me. What you see here is a million ton mountain of coal. How long do you think it could power the UK for? Answer? Just over a day. Perhaps it was facts like this that made me realise life on land was not so different from life at sea. The same applied to anything finite. Water, copper, phosphorus, down to the indium in the screen of the phone in your pocket. The word finite now had a different meaning to me. We spend a lot of money and effort taking stuff out of the ground, making something from it, and then we throw it away. But actually, where is a way? If we keep taking a finite thing and dumping it, what will happen in the end? But it's OK, because we have a plan, don't we? The plan to take a bit less stuff out of the ground, make things more efficiently, and then throw away a bit less, and maybe even recycle some of it. But where will this actually get us? Is it just delaying the inevitable? So let's face it. If we just focus on using less and creating slightly less harm, we end up back here. Can't we do better than this? Living systems have proven themselves to create an abundance of stuff and successfully for billions of years. It looks almost like now we're trying to function outside the rules, like our operating system's broken. We're trying to impose a linear system on a circular world. So is there something that we can learn from these living systems? Something that might provide an insight into how we can rethink the future? There is. And that's something that companies and, in fact, whole countries like China and Holland are beginning to use. Their aspiration is to get to a system that works long term, a circular economy. Energy in living systems comes from the sun. In our rethought world, we see this in the form of renewable energy, sources that last. Diversity brings resilience. Living systems benefit from a range of many different organisms and scales. They balance efficiency with effectiveness to survive external shocks. Some modern companies use this concept to model infrastructure, ensuring that they're not reliant on one supplier, one resource, one type of energy. They collaborate and adapt. It works for communities too. Waste equals food. Waste does not exist in living systems. Yes, of course. I know what you're thinking. Worms don't have iPhones and whales don't drive cars. But we can use this same principle when we make man-made products. And in the world of making stuff, it's called closing the loop. Take a fridge. When it's time to get rid of one, we pay to throw it away. Why? Do we actually want a fridge, or do we want cold food? I think unless you collect old fridges, you know the answer to this. In the future, there'll be more people in the world. Materials will be more expensive, and so will energy. Perhaps in the future, the company owns the precious materials in our fridge. 
and the fridge is now made to be made again. When its useful life is complete, it goes back to its maker for its next life. The valuable materials are maintained. Now comes the clever bit, where we start to weave together these insights and rethink the future. Imagine an electric car. Slow, boring, expensive and impractical. Now think back to how long ago it was that you couldn't watch a video on your phone. And then imagine the endless possibilities of the future. Imagine innovation, development, and that an electric motor has half the energy loss of a petrol or diesel vehicle. We need half the energy to power it from the start, making it more powerful, faster, and more fun to drive. Imagine that we make it lighter, using polymers that are made to be used again and eliminate waste. Imagine to make it cheaper, the maker owns the battery, and we have battery stations rather than petrol stations to make the range further and further. Imagine we connect our car to our house, which is linked to the national grid. Houses and cars then act as capacitors, so during ad breaks when the nation turns on its kettles, we can avoid firing up a power station. So if we can work towards a system where stuff is made to be made again, where we use renewable energy to make and move things and we celebrate diversity, can we not rethink and redesign the future? A future that can actually build capital, not just eat things out a bit longer. Switch to using things, not using things up. It's not just about technology, but creativity, and about how we can learn from a model that's been tried and tested for billions of years. We have a window of opportunity to make this transition, and it's up to us to take the first step. Assume nothing. Question everything. Rethink the future.